All right, we're good to go. We'll be playing again. Fantastic. guys here we are thank you for joining us i'm chef dan with trends translated live and we're back for another exciting episode of the trends and some culinary applications it's just you some fun simple easy ways that make sense to how to use everyday products and things that are out there that food manufacturers can just give a fun twist to and show to their customers and create some cool ltos and we thought today would be really cool to focus on instagrammable foods because it has so much going on and so many people are talking about it and so many people are looking at it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run through a few things and talk about uh, what that looks like. I want to do some housekeeping first and thank some of the folks that are part of this show. We've got uh, Carlisle Food Service Group that's going to be Chef John Beagle who has uh, been so gracious and helping us out with some plateware and, and pots and pans and doing the right thing so it looks beautiful when we share it with you. Uh, some other key guests we'll get to in just a moment. As a matter of fact, um, I'll run down. We're, we're going to have a quick conversation with Data Central's Marie Mould. She's compiled some really exciting stats on who it is that's driving this Instagram craze, uh, numbers around it, and why it really is something you should kind of sit up and pay attention to as you talk about it with your food product and your menu. Uh, we're going to then also have another really cool chef uh, Greg Grisanti is a good pal and friend of mine, and Chef Greg has been in national restaurant chains. He's been with food manufacturers, and so this is someone who's had to keep his finger on the pulse of this from the very beginning, creating uh, you know menus for uh, some national burger chains and, and, and casual dining concepts. So we're going to take a look at that, and then we're going to play with a couple products that I think are really exciting, and the reason they're exciting is because they're in the top 10 when you talk about um, when you talk about Instagram, they're the top 10 things. They're the things that people take the most pictures of. Uh, one of those products, well, not surprisingly, is bacon. So we have our friends from uh, Nooski Bacon here. Um, Megan, she'll be sharing a little bit about uh, the story of, of Nooski's and, and their, their perspective on that. Uh, we're going to look at some other products from this as well. And then we're going to talk about the other product that's probably on 90%. And I just I made that number up from my own diving into what I see on Instagram is cheese. So we've got some really nice product from Belgioso cheese and they're going to um, show a couple of fun applications. We're going to teach you what, what we can do with that stuff as well. So I want to just kind of remind you that this is a live show. So there's an opportunity to type in, uh, interact with us. We're growing, we're new. So like us, go to Trends Translated Live, hashtag it and um, make sure you follow so you get all the updates as we go live when we go live because not every show is in studio working with food sometimes we're exploring outside in restaurants uh, talking to the local shops that are doing some really inception style products so we want to make sure that we have that i'm going to show you a couple slides uh, before we invite marie on because i want to share with you guys some really cool statistics on instagram itself so surprisingly uh, this number is mind-boggling. Instagram has a billion monthly users. That is crazy. 3.5 billion likes per day is what happens every day on Instagram. So this is a platform that you really need to pay attention to. And I'll tell you, one of the other places, you know, it used to be Facebook, right? But no one said Facebookable food. But Instagramable foods really has picked up and it's driven a lot of cool things. And one of the, the thoughts, processes behind that, 
um, besides the numbers that, that Data Essentials has, is there's a gentleman named Gary V, and he talks about social media platforms and leveraging these into um, newer platforms and capturing that audience that you really want to have. And he speaks about the maturity of these social media platforms. So taking a look at you know where Facebook was, now who's on Facebook? You know, well, it's more of an older profile. It's your baby boomers and uh, Gen Xers, whereas your millennials and younger are really on Instagram. So you want to kind of keep capturing that new audience. This is a platform to definitely think about. I wanted to also point out something interesting. It doesn't always have to be a crazy outrageous photo. As a matter of fact, the most popular uh, viewed item with the most likes is an egg. But as I see here, not just any, it's this egg, this brown egg, 53 million likes and growing. I mean, it's mind blowing. That's, that beats Justin Bieber, that beats Selena Gomez. It even beats the Kardashians. So this egg is the number one liked item on Instagram. And it's not a celebrity, it's just an egg, which is really cool. So uh, a couple other things I want to point out to you and share another slide is there's a whole bunch of other people out there that are doing some really neat things. There's so social influencers, I guess you could call them, that have really, in that millennial group, they help go out and they explore. They're the foodies of today's world. They're not necessarily culinary experts, but you know when they see something that excites them, they make a video of it and they show this. I mean, this picture that you see here just went up a couple days ago. I mean, Devour Power has quite a following. They run around New York City and a few other places. And this is a video clip with 480,000 likes and views in just a matter of a day or two. So that happens to be a really cool hot dog. We were inspired by that. And we're gonna show you a hot dog concept as well today. And then on the flip side of that, I have another slide I wanna show you. You know, it can be something as beautiful and simple as a styled shot of your LTO or your dessert special. Uh, this happens to be a shot from Cheesecake Factory on their Instagram page. And you know, over 20,000 likes, over 500 comments. I want you to think about that because social listening is really important and hearing what your guests have to say about something can really help you figure out what your next LTO is. And that's something I think is really important to, to keep in mind as you go through what you're gonna put on Instagram and, and what's gonna be the thing that you feature. Is it gonna be a beautiful stylized shot? Is it gonna be kind of more of a, of a you know, raw and, and unedited kind of uh, video of them cooking the hot dog and tasting it? So there's a lot of options to look at. So I wanted to kind of point that out and share that with you guys. And then we're gonna go into, um, it's a little bit of housekeeping, so make sure that you, you can like us, thumb us up, you know, uh, question marks, and, and ask us questions, and engage, you know, engage with us on the show. And also, afterwards, feel free to reach out to us at uh, foodtrendtranslator.com, and we will be happy to answer questions and, and you know, help you through any of that. So without any further ado, I believe we have on the line with us uh, from Data Central, Marie Mould. Uh, there she is. Marie, welcome back. Hi, Dan. Thank you. It's good to be back. Excellent. I'm just going to ask him to pump the volume up a little bit more in my ear so I can hear you. Perfect. Sure. And down just a touch. <laughs> hey, we're live. This is it. So, Marie, welcome to the show, and we're really glad you joined us again. You've put together some really exciting slides about um, Instagram, and so it's not, yeah. it's not all eye candy, is it? It's not all eye candy. And Dan, I think you really hit the nail on the head. Like, you know, as a millennial myself, I can vouch that Instagram is the tool that we're using these days to find information on food. Um, so surely hot topic. I think it's a great one for the show today. And there's some compelling stats around Instagram use too. Awesome. So you have a couple of slides that you want us to show, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Can we pull them up? Yeah, let's, let's put those up on screen and let you walk through us. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, one thing I think is interesting is when we ask consumers what drives you to try something new, um, we hear from older consumers, boomer generation, that they're most likely to try something new if they know it will taste good. Like, they can look at it and think, that's going to taste great and that drives me to try it. Whereas younger folks are kind of the exact opposite. Like our millennials and our Gen Z tell us that 
they're driven to try something new for news sake. Like they want the novelty of it. They want this new kind of dish. And I think Instagram is a huge driver of that. It's like you order something today, like a cheese tea or, you know, an egg waffle in Chinatown or something. And you almost get the credit for it just by kind of taking a picture and posting it. You don't even need to eat it. It's like that Instagram influence is really what you're going for. So, in addition to, oh, sorry. No, no, I was just looking at your slide. So, you know, as a culinarian, we always talk about flavor and taste. So I'm seeing there's a sweet spot there between the generations. For sure there is, yes. And you know, that the boomer audience, they wanna know something is going to taste good. You know, of course they want it to taste good as do younger consumers, but younger folks are also driven by new things and new novel experiences and frankly they want to post what they're eating on their social media we find that most of them do so it's like a balance of course it has to be a d item but it has to photograph well today too just like the concepts you're going to share with us perfect thanks for saying there so you have another slide i'm going to switch to and let you talk about that a little bit the gen z's and millennials yeah, so Gen Z and Millennials, you know, Instagram in particular is important to them or surely something they notice LTO activity happening with. So if a restaurant chain is um, sharing information on LTOs on Instagram, younger consumers are seeing that. And, you know, they're seeing it, they're going to be more driven to try it. Um, they also tell us 30% of them uh, post food pictures on social media. So it's like, they see your advertisement on Instagram. It's kind of the social platform, like you mentioned, Dan, that, that younger consumers are using today. So they're seeing these ads for LTOs and new dishes at restaurants, and then they're going there to try them and posting pictures of the food. Yeah, so, so this is a great platform for marketing and advertising for restaurants, kind of on a low-key basis to put something out there and even try before they go national to all their accounts yeah yep for sure and you know personally i also use instagram as a tool like if i try a new restaurant for the first time or if i see something that kind of piques my interest instagram is where i then find that you know manufacturer that restaurant or the meal delivery service or whatever it is it's really an important social media tool yeah i'd say that certainly makes me take a look at a restaurant see what they're offering when i see that now you have yeah. a Another slide that you speak to about the actual ads for LTOs. Yeah, ads for LTOs. I think what's interesting about that is consumers tell us they're seeing those ads. So they're seeing these ads on Instagram, maybe more so than other avenues like TV or radio or um, other sources. So then you have to imagine they're seeing these ads, these mouthwatering pictures, they're going to be driven to go try them. So just thinking about Instagram as an important tool for advertising, LTOs, in addition to core menu items or new launches, but just that you can feel pretty confident that your consumer base is seeing those advertisements. So if, if LTO ads drive 56%, that seems like a really big number compared to traditional print ads or even... Uh, on regular TV, you know. Yeah. So I know my family, I've got a young teenage daughter who is always on her phone and always flipping through. So it seems like their attention is on these devices far more than watching a large screen that the older generation like myself is looking at. I'd rather see a 65 inch screen versus a five inch screen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true for whatever reason. It's the small screens that are important these days. So definitely. So with that, how else is Data Essential seeing um, LTOs progress? And as a matter of fact, I think you've shared a couple ways in uh, the next slide of some testing of things that have had some great reach. Yeah, you know, the, um, the next slide I wanted to highlight sort of you picked such on trend and well loved products for your demo today, Dan. So kudos to you on that. Um, but wanted to highlight, you know, just a couple kind of real world launches that feature these items like burrata or uh, bacon, thick cut bacon or like these tiramisu flavors. So I picked these three examples as really a couple uh, representations of items that have sort of hit what we call the sweet spot of menu innovation. So that's scoring above like 70 or 80% in two key metrics, purchase intent and uniqueness. 
So that first burrata pizza that has pesto and balsamic and burrata on it, that achieved that level of success. Uh, so really well-loved kind of ingredients and flavors there. And then also the sandwich from Burger King did great in regard to purchase intent in particular with, with its thick cut bacon. And then the tiramisu shake at Shake Shack scored great too. So um, even cheeses that might not be quite as well known with consumers today, like a mascarpone, uh, that's proof that that can kind of generate these high interest uh, from consumers. Uh, interesting. So thank you for pulling these examples up because we're actually going to play with some of these products and show some fun Instagrammable ways that people could do it in their own shops as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else is there that would be the bottom line? You know, Data Essentials tracks so many great things besides the individual food items. Instagram is kind of a, the wild west, I would say, of, of social media. Is there a takeaway or any one important item that you would say um, people that are willing to look into this area should be considering? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I would say just that, you know, truly Instagram is important. It's a really important source today that consumers, especially the younger folks, are looking at to get food information and, you know, to get excited and interested in trying new things. And I think it's important to keep in mind this notion that Gen Z and millennials really want to try something new because it's new to them. So it could be these global flavors or it could be like a hot dog and a taco like you're demoing today, sort of a new application in a familiar format. Uh, so thinking about how we can be innovative within our product lines and our menus to make these Instagrammable items, whether it's, again, like the application or the format of it, or if it's truly a new flavor, like maybe a mascarpone cheese is new or mascarpone cheese on a coffee beverage is probably new to a lot of people. So thinking outside the box and thinking about how we can be novel and, and interesting with our innovation to make it Instagrammable for uh, consumers today. You know, that's, that's interesting because some of the highest Instagram uh, likes that you've seen on some of these pictures, one of our products we're going to look at today is the burrata. And that particular uh, example, it's a video, very, very simple. You know, burrata is classic Italian mozzarella cheese stuffed with a soft cheese inside, creamy and ooey and gooey. And it's just a simple slice of the, of the burrata over a hundred thousand views on this particular yeah. thing it doesn't have to be crazy it doesn't have to be off the charts um, but sometimes it's it is off the charts so it's really kind of giving the feel for what your restaurant is you know who you are and showing the excitement that you guys do so is it a big freak shake is it a classic tiramisu shake is it a sliced cheese you know just kind of oozing out on itself so yeah. that's a really good point yeah yeah, I'm excited to see your development today, Dan. I'm curious about that coffee drink in particular, so I, I'll be tuning in. Yeah, please, tune in later. We're going to be showing, well, one of the Chinese uh, trends that's happening is, is, is cheese tea. And yep. we're doing our own version here. We're going to do it with some coffee and mm -hmm. show it kind of an American uh, styling on it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. So. Hey, Marie, thanks so much for joining us. This information is really, really important for our guests to take a look at. And I love that you showed a little bit of the scoring mechanisms that you guys can do to help kind of provide a little bit more tangible numbers around what you're going to do. So they can kind of put it out there on the Instagram, get some feels and likes, and then do some scoring through some data central applications. So really, really empowering. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dan. OK, Marie, that is. Uh, well, that's it for today. <laughs> I'm going to keep going on, and we're going to talk to Chef Greg in just a second here. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, Marie. You too. All right. Looks like Chef Greg should be on in just a second here. Uh, we're going to take a look, and he's, he's going to be accepted into the, the, the queue. So what we have here also, guys, we're going to take a look, and I'm going to make an introduction to Greg. I'm just going to take a quick peek at um, sharing some of the details. Again, please feel free to jump in. I'm trying to follow you online here and, and show some of the, um, the questions you may have, the thumbs up. Thank you for the reactions, I really appreciate it. 
we're looking to uh, to get get more and more of that happening. So Chef Greg Grisanti is going to be joining us in a little bit. He was R and D with Bob Evans. He was uh, R and D at Frisch's Big Boy. Um, he's also a fellow alum of myself at Johnson & Wales, and he's a certified research chef at the RCA uh, with accreditation of a CRC. So he's got all the things that make uh, someone who has the validity to talk about the trends and talking about everything that's happening here. So we should have him on in just a minute. He's going to share with us a little bit how Instagram affects the menu and how he thinks about it. Um, so I'll know when he's coming up in just a minute. But what I wanted to kind of talk about, something that is... Um, that's that's kind of surprising. There's a there's a couple different camps on Instagram. Uh, before we start playing with the food, is there's um, you know there's there's a restaurants that take your phone away because they don't want to have your picture being taken. Uh, and personally, you know, I guess if you're at a certain price point and they feel that it's too um, too high end of a restaurant dining establishment, and they want to maintain a certain poise of their guests. Uh, I get it. I get it. But 90% of the diners are going to be you know, they're going to want to take pictures. They want to share where they're at, especially these younger diners that Marie shared with us. There is a, really a lot of, um, just a lot of people who want to take pictures, even if it's just a simple beverage and snapping it to their friends and, and putting it on Instagram and getting some, you know, I tasted this. So, you know, I'm more for the, hey, let's take pictures of it. Let's provide it because that's free marketing. It's an opportunity to capture all the comments around what they say and really to listen to your guests of, of what they like or didn't like. So I say, you know, hey, allow the cameras in, take pictures of food, uh, make your food as exciting and as innovative as possible, you know, to get it out there and share. So I think until we get Chef Greg back on, we're gonna move forward. I'm gonna invite our friend from Nooski's, Megan uh, Dorr. She's in charge of marketing over there. And we're gonna take a look at some of the products that, that we're gonna do uh, with, with Dorsch and, um, and Nooski's Bacon. So, Megan, come on into set. Hello, hello. Hi, Thank you for coming to join us today. We have a lot of uh, cool things we're going to be looking at, and we're going to take a look at um, the bacon. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to take a look at the hot dogs. So, two things, you know, everyone gets it, bacon and hot dogs. They're America's favorite, and, and you know, so we want to make sure that we show a couple fun ways, and Maybe you can show us, uh, or tell us actually, a little bit about Nooski's history, because I think it's really important to understand sure. who Nooski's is. It's kind of a funky sounding name, but it's a family name. So, yeah, it, is. Uh, it is. So tell us about it. So it's a third generation smokehouse based in this little village in Wisconsin, Wittenberg, in central Wisconsin, north central. Yeah. Um, and the family started the smokehouse in 1933, middle of the Great Depression, you know, times were tight. And uh, they, had their grandfather who was the founder um, they were they were actually having some trouble keeping the family farm they needed to make some money they had brought from Prussia their methods of smoking and they okay. knew that they really loved their smoked meats so they packed some up in the automobile they drove up north to the resorts and uh, and, and he sold ham and bacon out of the back of the car so this is old world style yeah. smoking that you're still doing today yeah we still smoke everything yeah. the same way we have proprietary smokehouse designs it's real smoke real apple wood yeah. we also do a cherry wood uh, but the bulk of the product we make is apple wood we still do the same thing whole logs it's a yeah. really nice rich deep smoke Oh, Same and, and I'm sure walking past those smokehouses is like heaven. Yeah, even sometimes <laughs> when you drive past on the highway, if the wind is right, you can smell it when you go by. Oh, yeah. And, and if you haven't driven through Wisconsin, you know, you'll see it off of Highway 29 uh, slash 94, I think, is, is the subdivide. It's on your way to Minneapolis. So yes. if you know, you're heading out from Wisconsin, Minneapolis, you'll see a, a Nooski's little red truck on the hillside directing you into their, their, their location. So kind of fun to check it out and see what that. So we brought with us, I'm going to grab a couple of things, sure. if you don't mind. I'm going to step over here. We brought with us a couple of products, and, and they're right out of the freezer. I wanted to show a couple of things we're going to, we're going to work with because, you know, this is food service, right? We're, yeah. we're showing bulk packaging. And uh, this is your, your super bun length big dogs. I just want to scratch the name off so we can take a look at that. And then this is the thick apple with smoked bacon. So what, what's going on here? And, and I think there's a little Instagram story on these guys, oh, right? Oh, so much right now. Um, you know, hashtags alone, the word thick has a lot of implications and it gets used a lot. So that alone will, will get you a lot of views. But thick bacon has been really, really popular for us on Instagram and we see it being really popular for, for chefs and we see a lot of uh, consumers, a lot of customers at restaurants taking pictures of 
things that get made with this item. Yeah. So this is a like a four to six count applewood smoked bacon. Um, you can cut your own from a slab. Most okay. of what we do is food service slab, but we also do the pre-cut, um, you know, all the way from four to six slices per pound to, yeah. to really, really thin. So we see this being braised a lot. You know, you'll okay. see it being braised and then seared off and served as an appetizer all by itself. Just a really impressive piece of bacon. Um, sauce it if you like, but braise it and then sear it off, or mm -hmm. you can sous vide it and then sear it off. That's been really, really big lately. Uh, we see it done with the cherry wood too, which caramelizes a little differently. It gives you a little more dramatic contrast in color, yeah. and that's a little sweeter smoke. But that thick cut bacon, whether you cut it yourself from a slab or whether you get the thick sliced, those big dramatic pieces, really impressive on yeah. Instagram. Well, I, I can tell you, I mean, I'm familiar with Nooski's being here in Wisconsin, but I've seen you guys at all the uh, the trade shows, the RCA and the the, and the ACF shows, yep. and I've had more than my share of opportunities to taste it, and it's always a delight to do that. Um, we're going to actually make a couple fun applications. Maybe you can stay here and, and talk through it. I'm going to grab uh, some. Of the, we have some baked off in advance, Ooh. and so I'm going to show you this this stuff here. I'm just going to bring it right here. <laughs> so what we have, these are um, this is the thick sl slice cut bacon and it's been cooked off in a little advance, we're gonna do an appetizer with it. Really simple, and kind of to your point, it's your most Instagram thing that it you really have going is. on. So we're gonna grab these, these applications over here, and I've got some trays set up that's gonna show us, and I thought it'd be really fun, I'm sorry for stepping off stage for just a minute, guys, but I thought it'd be fun to show it really in um, the same product in two different ways. Sure. So something a little bit more uh, on the, on the uh, higher end, maybe you know your Cheesecake Factory style, uh, locations and then um, something a little bit more casual. So we, what we have here is just some grilled mango, to, you know, kind of a, a chutney style salsa, something a little bit fun to dig into and play with. And I had something similar to this actually at the uh, at the um, RCA conference in Louisville this this past year. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of make it like this. So what we have is is we're gonna just simply and it's so easy. Just take this beautiful bacon. Uh, you don't even have to do anything to it except bake it off. This could be braised and be, you know, ultra tender, but I love that it's just rendered and it, and it makes off just this gorgeous, gorgeous, um, you know, the fats rendering, the oils, and then it's really simple to garnish it and let your guests do a little bit of playing. Yes. You know, is that kind of fun, you know? So one of the ways they can Instagram it is once it's obviously delivered, you know, if you're the operator, you know, it could be a chance to just kind of catch this salsa and, you know, pouring this salsa over your bacon and giving them, you know, it could be a whole bunch of, it could be cherry salsa. Yeah. Uh, we can go seasonal and make some other things with it. Um, it could be something pumpkin style that would go great. Maybe make a pumpkin spread and put it onto the crostinis and let your guests cut, cut the bacon and share. So these are kind of like a high end shareable in this format. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, some really good stuff with, with chimichurri and this bacon that goes really nicely together oh. too. So <laughs> all for oh, it. Oh, that sounds awesome. So I'm going to put that, and then we're going to sh also show you the same ingredients, same setup, but we're just going to do another version of that. So I'm going to take these guys, and we roasted these just a little bit longer, intentionally. So we want them to be a little bit crispier, mm -hmm. uh, but the beauty of this thick cut bacon is that when it's roasted off, it still has chew, it has flavor, um, all the great things that you want out of a bacon uh, are still here when you're, when you're doing this. So we're just going to cut it real simple like that and just drop it right into the dish and and offer it as kind of like a an, an appetizer that's more more casual style a little bit more fun uh more whimsical than than what we're doing here I love that. uh and then so it's just simple you could do a little bit more on the side and dress up your crostinis with it as well so we're gonna kind of just ladle it over you know so this isn't uh you know this isn't rocket science this is culinary applications that are made really easy and that's what we love to do, just to show things that are super, super easy to make. And it's, it really is that easy. I mean, you're telling me that this is how people are Instagramming it, and it's driving a lot of, a lot of visibility to your product. It absolutely is. You know, the, the most popular Instagram posts for us and for our chefs usually are simply slices of bacon done in a simple way that still shows the structure of the product. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, sandwiches, classic sandwiches like BLTs and things like that are also super highly Instagrammable. Yeah, so here we go. I just want to let the, let the folks take a look at it. I'll put it in a way that hopefully the camera can catch that. Because uh, it looks gorgeous. It and it's so, so fun and easy. 
and it you know bacon obviously is has been around forever and but you know having bacon really good bacon uh, makes a difference and people are willing to pay up you know that essentials I've been listening to them for many many years and 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 also listen to my customers as I'm into the national chains and talking to their chefs and one of the things they kind of tell me secretly is hey when there's a really good product we know it's more expensive uh, but it's not about price it's about flavor and that's where I think you know premium quality products are are featured make make a difference on the menu I, I think so too and I think that premium products uh, you know some of the more run-of-the-mill products might be okay yeah right but premium products can have a signature flavor I mean if I sit down and yeah. I eat five different bacons and, and this is probably a little extreme but I can probably <laughs> tell you what smokehouse they came from yeah yeah so uh, there really is a difference in taste and if yeah. you sit down and, and cut against each uh, the other bacons and, and cut against other products in other yeah. premium divisions there is a difference yeah speaking of and let's let's do a little, little cutting here um, grab a grab a piece uh, I thought I we might <laughs> You know, kind of what should someone look for when they're tasting smoked bacon? Okay, so, so. we like to uh, mm. recommend that you don't overcook it. I know there's some crispy bacon lovers out there, but in a nice smoked bacon, you, you want it to have some chew. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to still appreciate that smoke um, and, and keep the integrity of the fat there. You want that melty, unctuous fat to, to you know, be all over your tongue. That's what you're looking for, so don't yeah. cook that all out. Uh, plus, in our smoking process, we cook a, a fair amount of the fat out because it's a really slow smoke, so we render a lot of it out mm. in, the, in the smoking process. So you want to keep some of that fat. It's wow. good. We look for a specific fat to lean ratio for that reason. And it leaves that sweet fat. The fat is what holds the sweetness of the smoke, so you want yeah. that. I'll tell you, what I'm getting from this is um, it's balanced, it's meaty, and actually I just got a little bit, because I broke mine in half a little bit, and the backside of that fat just kind of softened across the back of my mouth and wow and this is i'll tell you yeah so megan just told us don't overcook it i intentionally over baked it a little bit because i wanted to be crispy in the jar but i'll tell you what that flavor that fat is still in there and it's 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 amazing so well the thicker bacon acts it's, a it's forgiving too. it's yeah. forgiving a little bit so yeah so that's just one of the fun ways i think instagramming you know, your pictures and doing something fun like this would be possible. Another idea, I'm going to turn this pan on a little bit and we're going to, we're going to show um, something a little bit that was inspired by an earlier, earlier Instagram that we saw. And um, hey, if you hand me that uh, tray. Yep. And I'm going to make a grilled cheese taco chili dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think and I need to have one of these. So this is this is something you know that you see in the videos. So what we've done, we slightly toasted off uh, a, a corn tortilla uh, and added a piece of American cheese to it. So think of uh, grilled cheese, right? So we're gonna take the bread and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start sizzling that. And then you're gonna put your cheese side down onto the bread and let those toast. So while they're toasting, um, what I want you to kind of tell us a bit about is your hot dog product, because this is going to be a hot dog um, that I want to show with you guys. So, um, yeah, what, what's, you know, that's, that's, that's a category with a lot of products. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have a, a really cool size that we're playing with today. <laughs> yeah, these um, are our, our big dogs. Um, they're a, a pork and beef wiener with a natural casing, so they have that yeah. nice snap. Um, and they're they're very dramatic, so they're great great for Instagram in that they just look really impressive, right? Um, and you can put them on lots of different things. You can do them on hoagie rolls. I love that you're putting uh, bread and tortilla together. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and gives thanks. it nice structural integrity too, right? Well, there's there's a reason behind it, and and it's to you know functionality and operations. You know, if somebody wants to have that fusion yeah. or that everyone understands a grilled cheese, that's very very. Um, ubiquitous right I mean people get it but you start adding something like a corn tortilla a slice of American yep. cheese to it uh, chorizo chili some crunched bacon cilantro avocado red diced onion there's a lot of good <laughs> hashtags in there a lot yeah. of good hashtags there, there's a winner right <laughs> yeah we there's see we see a lot of a lot of fun uses of of this hot dog lately applications like spicy mango salsa on top of the dogs we've seen uh, chicken cordon blue dogs we've seen buffalo dogs so all kinds of different things you can do very instagrammable as well yeah and that's that's the cool thing about a hot dog it's it's just one way to deliver that fun experience and i think uh, you know as you talk to your operators and brokers and you know they all want to be able to show something that's 
little bit more different, you know. Yeah. Everyone gets the hot dog in a, in a typical bun, but how about changing up the carrier a bit, you know, and then adding some, some influential flavors that are definitely trending. I mean, avocado's been off the charts for yes. <laughs> quite a while, so we have a little <laughs> bit of that in there. Uh, bacon, you can't go wrong. And you know what we did is we took a piece of this extra thick bacon and just did a coarse dice on it, which is gorgeous. You can't go wrong with uh, with something like this. I mean, just add that extra crunch, that extra umami style kind of burst in your mouth as you have all these other flavors going on. Yeah, and if you leave it in pieces like that that are sizable, you can still see them nicely. They keep their integrity in the photographs too. Yeah, yeah, you definitely will see that in the photograph. So we're toasting this up. It's it's just want your cheese to be just melted enough. Like I said, we pre-toasted the um, the corn tortilla because we wanted to we wanted to get it uh, soft and we didn't want to put a raw tortilla out there. And then it's really pretty easy from that point on. You know, we're talking uh, put put your your dog in here and wrap it up. And it's fun because it's oversized, so it's got all this you know length on the outside. I mean, that's definitely an Instagramable thing. Here's some chorizo chili that we, we put together that we thought would be um, really gorgeous to throw on here. This smells great. Oh, wait till you taste it. And I have not <laughs> seen this done with the tortilla either. I think this is a, I think this is a terrific idea. Well, like I said, Instagram inspired me for, for some fun ideas. And so that's where I got this from. And uh, we're gonna put a little bit of the avocado in here. Yeah, like you said before, if you hashtag anything with bacon and avocado, it's it's uh, probably gonna do well for that's, you. That's one of your good ones, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I imagine that it definitely does so and then we're going to take uh, some red onion and we're going to dress it up like that we're going to take some of this uh beautiful bacon oh yeah <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you can be super super over the top some you know really crazy with it and uh and then you know of course some cilantro you could finish it off with crema you could have uh you know sour cream anything else that you want if you want a sauce but you know there's there's a lot in here and as I said, the functionality, you know, the operational efficiencies of using that taco shell or that soft corn tortilla, it adds an attribute of flavor, the corn toastedness. It's got the cheese, it's got the grilled cheese piece. So um, <laughs> I think we have a plate to put it on. I'm gonna <laughs> grab that and set it over here. And then we'll, uh, we can even take a look at this. So that's, that's what I thought would be a, just a fun, exciting way to do a, a taco chili chorizo dog and show that off a little bit. So a couple fun ideas and showing you guys how that might be. It's it's a fun one to eat. It's got a lot of action going on, a lot of a lot of craziness. So different bread carriers will hold up differently and work with that. But Instagrammable, it can be messy, it can be fun, it can be basic. Yeah. Good and it can colors. be and colors and it can hashtag uh, bacon and, <laughs> and you're in. So yeah that's really kind of what we're looking at doing. Just sharing a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement about what your product is and hopefully have a chance to have others explore it and try it themselves. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, thank you. We'll move on to uh, doing something else until next time. Megan's gonna step off and we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh, are we gonna have uh, an opportunity to catch with Chef Greg? Okay, so we're, we're unfortunately Chef Greg, his uh, connection got lost. So I know he and I talked a little bit about um, you know, Instagramming foods and, and you know, what, what it meant to him prior to the show. So, uh, you know, I think it's really important to, to kind of talk through some of the other ways that Instagram influences the menu. And, and, and one of the points that he brought up is, you know, as, a, as an operations who's using Instagram, this is a way to, uh, you know, from a, from a chef who runs operations, he's like, this is a way for my team to uh, really put their best foot forward when they're plating. So every dish that you plate, every dish that you create uh, is gotta be, you know, that final touch so it's Instagrammable because it's gonna be photographed most likely when it goes out. And you wanna make sure that um, your guests have that, that opportunity to post something really cool. And then even better yet, that others see it and they say something really exciting about it and they love it because uh, this, is, this is, you know, it used to be just that the expediter on the line was wiping the final rim of the plate and putting the final garnish on. Uh, now it's it's the guests who are actually giving the final valuation about things. So Instagram's changed the way I think restaurants operate, how they view their menu, and how they create new concepts. And so that's why I think this is such a topic that's worthy of looking at. And as you can see, the uh, the, the charts show you know the younger generations going for those 
you know, special LTOs. I was impressed really when Marie shared with us how um, the LTO ads are driving, was it 56% of the millennials are actually going um, to restaurants because of those ads. That's a huge number. You know, that's a really big number in marketing and something that, you know, should definitely get your attention and think about. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're, as you're looking about putting changes to your menu or even, you know, taking pride in, in your staff and making sure they're plating the best dish and putting out the next thing that's going to make your guests stop and pause and take a picture. I think it's quite an honor if someone's going to do that. So, um, so those are some fun, some fun concepts to look at. The bacon is just amazing. We have some other fun ideas that we're going to look at as well that I want to share with you guys. Uh, the other second item that's probably definitely in the top 10, I'm just, something that's in the top 10 of, um, of Instagram is cheese. So we have some really cool products to play with that I think you guys will really, really like. One of them is um, a version of the Chinese tea, green tea cloud. If you've seen this or heard about it, it's in China there is a rage hours long of folks lining up to try this cloud of cheese on top of their tea. And there's special instructions on how to drink it, uh, just to tip it uh, a third of the way, because this cheese cloud is not your typical cheese. It's, it's a whipped, blended combination. And so we have that here today, but we've made our own version of it. And really, I love this idea because it's kind of like took Americanized version of it. Uh, Belgioso makes mascarpone cheese. They make a whole bunch of fantastic cheeses. Um, but what we did with this one is we took their tiramisu flavored uh, mascarpone cheese and we've made it into the cheese cloud. And I can tell you, uh, the difference between using mascarpone and yogurt or uh, cream cheese is the, the smoothness, the lactic acid bite isn't there, and it's so creamy and so fluffy. It's a little thick just to take it out of the container and scoop it. So um, let me show you what, what this product, you know, so this is the retail package, and it's actually a great package for food service as well. You know, this is what it looks like when you get it out of, out of the package. It's, uh, it's pretty firm. Um, you know, so it's not anything that you're going to, let me grab a spoon and show you here, you know, it's, it's firm, but it's really, really smooth and really, really beautiful. This particular product is already blended with espresso. So it's got that, um, inspiration from tiramisu. So I've continued on that inspiration. I thought it'd be really fun to show how this might look in that coffee, uh, cloud that I've, that I've created for you guys. So I'm going to leave this right here and, uh, to take a quick quick look and get rid of some of these other concepts and so we can plate those in your way. We can leave those up there because they are delicious and I'm sure everyone will have questions about those. So one of the ways we're going to do this um, coffee cloud, it's pretty simple. So I need uh, my whipped, here we go. So what I did with this is because it's thicker, um, you know, in the, the ways that I've discovered from uh, blending this together, uh, the folks in China are doing a whole bunch of stretching their, this, their cheese out, their soft cheese. I took the, the mascarpone cheese and used some cold coffee to stretch it out because I don't want to lose that coffee flavor. And so this is, you know, to this one eight ounce package, this is about two ounces of coffee, cold coffee blended in, and you can see it's really soft and easy. And then I've whipped, uh, you know, some, some whipped topping, some heavy, heavy cream. So it's just really a one step kind of blend. And you fold this together and you mix this up and we're going to mix this up really easy in this bowl. And you just kind of mix it till it all kind of blends in. You know, there's really, it could be pre, pre whipped topping. If you have that product in house and just, uh, you know, everyone brews coffee and, uh, you know, so every restaurant's got coffee now, so a little coffee to stretch this out. And then you just kind of do a couple stirs and, you know, 30 seconds or less and you've got, you know, a really beautiful tiramisu style coffee cloud. And it's just that easy to make. So we're going to take this and add to it. Um, oh yeah. We're just going to add to it here, uh, some, some brewed coffee. This is, uh, some nitro coffee that we made earlier and you just add it in with your ice. It's not a difficult, uh, difficult thing to make at all. And so 
it's got to be you know thinned out a bit enough and you just plop it on now you ask hey what's the difference between this and whip topping well there is a world of difference between this and whip topping i can tell you that whip topping um is it just got a different mouthfeel this has a dense quality to it that makes it so um it's the fat it's kind of you know it just covers your mouth it makes it really really indulgent and something that you're gonna definitely want to explore and you can finish it off with uh, some some cocoa powder and finish it up like that this would be a great midday drink snack an opportunity to um, kind of satisfy more than just that cup of coffee because of the the cream cheese or the, the the mascarpone cheese on top of it it adds an extra you know decadence to it and really satisfies i mean it's a satiating drink if you finish this you're talking about something that is just going to kind of hang with you a little bit longer and it's fun to play with and, and taste and then we're also going to do it in another drink and here we've got some hot coffee and we're going to put it into that as well but i digress there's there's another fun way to do this and you you can even go kind of freak shake style on it and we're going to put into this drink i thought it'd be kind of really cool to add in you know some cookies so we have a little biscotti you know that we're going to throw in there you know now that really becomes a special drink something to dip into the the cream and and taste that mascarpone tiramisu on top of it eat it with the cookie you know another fun way as i mentioned is just simply put it into a, a cup of hot coffee and the reason i did that is because when i played with it earlier um, you know it creates a really nice creaminess into the coffee itself so think of uh, you know your hot chocolate days or anything like that you know, and then you could even sell it with a, a cannoli on top and create something kind of fun <laughs> like this. So it's super easy, it's super simple, but that, that green tea craze, um, you know, tea is not so American, obviously. And so, uh, you know, I thought it'd be really kind of fun to make it a little bit more, something that, that appeals to the masses and taking it to market, showing, you know, something like a cannoli topped uh, coffee cheese cloud. <laughs> it's dynamic, it's fun, and, and it's really tasty. And it gives your guests something to take. I mean, that is, that is photo worthy. You know, we can turn that around and take a few different angles of it. You know, one side's dipped in the chocolate chips, the other side has, you know, openness with the mascarpone in there. So it's really, really an indulgent treat and something I think is great to explore and understand. And it's really just the addition of one new ingredient to your, to your uh, menu. You know, that's the one thing is you don't want to create LTOs that require five, six new uh, items to be on the menu. You want to work with existing pantry items. And so we do that by using, you know, one item, simple, simple applications, mascarpone cheese, and just stretch it out with a little bit of cold coffee. You don't have to bring anything else special into that. And then add it to some whipped cream. This is something that I would want to guess that 90% of the operators have in, in house and can make some special drinks. Uh, we can make those adult style cocktails and start adding a little bit of rum and some hot toddies and you know there's a fun million different fun ways to go with it and you know it's kind of neat is is the hot drink slowly kind of uh, you know melts into that that uh, mascarpone cloud and starts to help it kind of drift down and if you stir it and you play with it you get this really creaminess in there so definitely something we want to want to take a look at and consider so one other fun product that i want to show that's really instagrammable uh, is Belgioso has a burrata cheese and so these are kind of um, playoffs actually Marie had Marie Mold had shared with us from Data Central earlier on you know the the scoring on things like this you know the mascarpone style uh, you know frosty drinks that uh, Shake Shack had done and so there's there's definitely good scoring on these kind of concepts so I want you to think about that there's there's good validity around it as well as if it's fun advertising but the other product I want to show you guys was the Burrata. So Burrata is a really unique cheese and it's, you know, something that I didn't know too well until, you know, five, six years ago and I started exploring. So Burrata is fresh mozzarella cheese uh, and it's wrapped around some cream. And so I'm just going to move these guys out of the way. Sarah, maybe you can grab those from me. Sarah, remember Sarah? She's our studio stylist, guys. She grabs things from me. She tries to sneak in and out of, of camera. But let me show you what this brata looks like. Uh, and this is just, you know, maybe we can get, get down in there. Show you how it's packaged. It's, it's you know, two to a, to a pack here. 
and it's packed in water. I drained some of the water because I didn't want it to spill on us. But it's really something uh, simple to, to work with. I'm going to put, put a little bit of this out here. Their number one um, video on Belgioso is something that's just so easy, and it's just a slicing open of the burrata, kind of akin to the egg, right? I mean, we're talking about you know, a standalone brown egg. This is burrata, and it's in the same category. But what happens? And this particular uh, application I'm going to show you right now isn't an application, it's just a plating. Um, matter of fact, I might just put it on a, a plate just so it doesn't... Uh, Sarah, can you grab me a small plate that I can put this on so I don't mess up the cutting board? Awesome. See, she is everywhere. She's everywhere. So this is really simple. And so this view has... Well, they've posted it a couple times if you take a look. It's, it's just simply cutting open the burrata like this. It has over 200,000 views on, on their Instagram page. And they reposted it again. And then it has another 100,000 views. So I know it's white on white, so which is probably kind of difficult to see. Um, but it's just this gorgeous um, cream, you know, stracciatella cheese inside of the, the mozzarella. So I just wanted to kind of show you. It, it doesn't have to be super crazy, but it has to be interesting and enticing. And the videos themselves just work really, really good. So we're going to make a really nice uh, BLT with this. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you what that might look like and something really easy. We've got some gorgeous grilled bread that we're going to place this on. Uh, some heirloom tomatoes. We have some beautiful pesto uh, arugula uh, um, aioli here that we made. So this is just such an easy dish to put together and a fun way to use burrata. Some people are using burrata on pizza, uh, putting it kind of right in the middle of the, of the pie and finishing it off because it's, it doesn't really need to be baked. It's one of those cheeses that if you set in the middle, it's kind of like an egg, it's like the egg of, uh, of cheese world and, and you set it in the middle of your pie and you let your, your guests kind of slice and share it and it kind of opens up and pours out over each slice. It becomes something you can dip your crust into. Just amazing and delicious. So we've got some of that. Um, and then we're going to put uh, some of these golden, beautiful heirloom tomatoes that, of course, Sarah went to the farmer's market this weekend and found these. I mean, they're beautiful. So I know this is kind of an exciting tomato to find and not in every restaurant, but we all hope to have such gorgeous tomatoes <laughs> all the time. And then we're going to put uh, a little bit of our arugula on here. It's just such a simple, easy sandwich to make, but uh, very, very, um, very, um, common and, and accepted and you know this is just that twist that little bit of something special and we're going to grab some bacon which i have uh set aside here over here yeah oh let's take a look at uh we have we have a question on on, on set so let me uh, log in here and take a look at what what they're asking so um hey chef greg try to call back in that's what we're hearing from them uh there's some other things going on let's take a look when that has come up. So hopefully he'll be on to us soon. And then we're gonna simply dress it up with this bacon. I mean, this stuff is just gorgeous. I mean, talk about a premium style sandwich. Um, am I getting, okay. I'm not seeing any, any other reaction on here, but uh, maybe you can uh, tell me, producers are telling me there's, there's questions, which I love. Thank you guys. Um, let me know and uh, maybe they can read it to me. And we're gonna, Finish this up. So the question is the hottest food trend. Say that one more time so I can the say it to the guest. Flavor trends and food service. The hottest flavor trends. Well, if you're speaking about uh, hot as in spices and heat, um, you know that's probably not what they mean metaphorically. But I will speak to that. You know the hottest is in flavors. You know sriracha took off like crazy. Uh, ghost pepper didn't quite hit the, the same way, but you know now we've got places like uh, you know Taco Bell that are jumping onto you know these other spicy peppers that are making their way into you know their their fry dishes and doing all that stuff. So you know, but as far as flavors, I think it's about international flavors that are are created with some kind of way that people understand it. It's it's not so foreign you know so you know indian masala tiki masala and and curries have been you know talked about for years and sometimes i think they're just too far out there for more of our typical diners to really digest i think they want to 
um, experience a flavor of it. So, you know, doing something like a, a peanut saute sauce, which isn't crazy, but you know, Thai, uh, or doing some kind of a, a sweet curry, uh, today is still really relevant. And, and I wouldn't be going too far beyond creating something that is off the scale that people don't recognize. You know, there's, there's some exciting things out there that I'm gonna see, um, you know, at some trade shows I've been to that I've seen, you know, people talk about. I think the one thing you wanna be looking at is beverages and looking at botanicals and, you know, looking at herbaceous roots, things with ginger in them. Uh, those kind of things are coming from the Middle Eastern world. And you know that's kind of like the the Chinese tea that we just played with, something that is acceptable in a format that you understand, but still kind of different. You know, like you know the cheese cloud looks like whipped cream to some degree, so people visually get it. But when they taste it, they're going, "Oh my God, that's something I've never had before." So um, I would say that doing things that have a little bit of, of international flavor influence to them is something that you want to be looking at. Uh, without getting too far off the mark. So that's where I would, I would point you to without saying a specific flavor. You know, looking at what your menu is and what you're doing is something that would evaluate where that, that, that gap is and where we could fill it in. So um, yeah, thanks for the question and hopefully <laughs> I answered it for you. So this is, uh, you know, there's just a simple, easy application of a BLT and, and you know, what I want to finish it off with is the burrata. I mean, this is just an amazing, and it's, it's held in water, so it's a little wet, which is good. You know, like you like that moisture. But we're going to simply put that on top of here, and and place it. And we're talking about a total Instagrammable moment. You can really push that out and have some fun pushing that cheese. And when you get it served to you, oh wow! We're going to slice that open and show what that baby's going to look like. And it's it's a bit of a mess, but sometimes, oh, it's a real mess. <laughs> But sometimes when you get that out to your customers, making a mess is, is one of the experiences that they're looking for. It's casual dining, you know, not so much in your QSR world, but this is an exciting sandwich that is going to be a sit down with a couple napkins and enjoy type of deal. So, you know, you've got a lot going on there. You've got thick toasty bread, you've got the bacon, uh, you've got some, some arugula mayonnaise, so it's got a little peppery uh, to it. It looks like a, a, a craziness here, but I'm going to tell you that is going to be absolutely delicious and something you're going to want to put together. And we'll master that a little bit more, but the burrata is supposed to explode. It's supposed to have that creaminess in it and just create a fun sauce. And, uh, you know, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And hopefully we'll get uh, some comments and reactions back from uh, Chef Greg when uh, he can answer some things to us. And I'll put them out for you guys. He was excited to be on. Uh, so sorry about not having them on, but we look forward to having you guys back because the whole reason for doing this show is because we love doing just simple applications that are just a little bit off. You know, innovation is about, you know, in, in our world, you know, is food manufacturers and talking to national chains and units of 50 or more, sometimes or less. It's really about developing that one slightly changed thing that's going to be recognizable that people are going to gravitate towards on the menu and keep it simple, but it's gotta be exciting. So, you know, we do some, you know, pretty basic applications, not a cooking show, it's, it's, you guys know how to cook. It's really about showing some applications, bringing some products to mind that you might not have seen or explored and, and putting it into applications. So I love doing that. It's, uh, it's where we love to kind of unleash your product and show it in a new light and some new ways and adding some flavors to it. So guys, I think that's going to be in for the show. Uh, I'm going to stay on, uh, online here and answer questions. So if you guys, I'll keep monitoring that. Uh, love to hear you. Join us on Trends Translated Live, the hashtag Trends Translated Live, and you'll get notifications as we go live for other events besides the studio kitchen shows, interviews with, um, other guests of local operators and a little bit more I call it unplugged with Chef Dan so it's it's a different format but it's the same kind of uh, approach to what we're talking about so make sure that you uh, follow us on that and become a part of the community and if you got any questions join us at uh, you know you can look us up at trendstranslatedlive.com and uh, we'd love to be able to talk to you about anything that might be of interest to you and how we can help you with that so until next time when you want to unleash your product and make it something exciting and fun Talk to the Food Trend Translator. I'm Chef Dan saying thank you and have a great day.